and welcome back to Garage Billion. This is the third episode on the Porsche 924 Safari build. In this episode we will be preparing the car for its roadworthiness check. Um, luckily it's a classic car so it only has to go for this check every two years. So I will be reassembling a few things that I've been taking apart over the last couple of days. Um, reassembling the rear right light cluster, making sure all those lights work. Um, there's a mess of cables under the um, dashboard where the pedals are, um, which is not great because you tend to um, hook them with your feet. So I want to clean that up. I need to get the horn button working. Um, and maybe if I have time, I will rebuild the shifter mechanism. The mechanism on the back of the gearbox is very sloppy. Uh, it's not great inside the car either. Um, so I've got all the bushes and all the rubbers and the things I need to rebuild that. So yeah, join me on this episode. Um, and if you like what you see, please uh, hit the like button. Please subscribe. Um, it lets me know that you guys like what you see. And uh, it gives me the uh, inspiration to do more of these episodes. So the first order of action is to install those rear lights again. And for that I will need a small socket and a long number 8. So let's get that lens back on. A fairly simple system you have eight of these little nuts that have to go on to these little studs here um, actually I think it's six now that I look at it so there's six of these little nuts on on studs and then um, it's just a matter of tightening them all up and uh, you have the rear lens back in the car another thing to remember is that these things are 40 years old so um, don't over tighten them or you will pull the stud out of the plastic and you'll have to spring for a new headlight unit and they are not cheap I think they're around 200 euros per, per side or something so uh, you could rather tighten this with your hand than uh, with a uh, tool okay I've got this light back in uh, it's screwed into the into the car all the bulbs work so uh, this part of the road williamness should be a cinch. Let's hope the rest is as well. So the keen eyed amongst you would have noticed that these headlights don't have covers. And uh, I've managed to score a set of used ones. And um, let's make this look the way it looked at the factory. There we go. That's a lot better, isn't it? It just looks right. They're a little bit worse for wear, but... Um, I think they'll clean up nicely. Okay. Headlights. Yes. Indicator. Left. Right. Hazards. Reverse. Fog. Fog's broken. Brake lights, fog light again, ah, fog light broken again. Headlights, left indicator, right indicator, hazards, reverse, brakes, and fog lights. Perfect. It's working. Okay, so we've got the lights to work, but uh, we are struggling with the horn, and that's not really working. Now, what I've managed to get working so far is that the horn button activates the relay. But it appears that the relay is not connected to the horn whatsoever and I think the horns are both dead because even with 12 volt directly on them they're not making any noise. And the one of the previous owners 
had this little thing going. So one cable and another cable with this switch in between. And when I bought the car, this sort of kind of triggered the horn, but uh, no longer does. So um, I think this relay is gone and the switch is not great. So I'll, maybe I'll MacGyver a new switch so we can get through the roadworthy and then I'll fix the horn button the proper way after I've done that. Or I take a breather and I fix the horn and make it work via that button instead of that junk of cable down there. But anyway, we're making progress as with these old cars. Ups and downs. Tomorrow is another day. All right. So I'm just back from the parts store. Um, hopefully I've got the solution for the malfunctioning horn. Um, I've bought a new two-tone twin tone horn set from Hella. Um, unfortunately this is red but uh, they don't sell anything else so I guess um, I will have red horns under the car. Maybe it'll look cool, maybe it won't. And the other thing I have is a brand new relay because the one that was in the car didn't smell all that great. Uh, it had a bit of a burnt carbon smell last night. And normally when a relay smells like that, it means it's past due. So, um, yeah, so I'll be going back to the car to see if I can get this working. Because if I can get the horn working, I can get the roadworthiness on the car. And then the real fun begins because then I can start transforming it into a proper off-road car. Right, let's get that horn working. It's the last thing I need to do to get this car roadworthy. Okay, so the first step is to remove both of these horns. Um, I tried them with 12 volt directly on those contacts and nothing's happening, so I think they just both died. I'll mount the new horns, get them installed, and then once that's done, I'll start chasing back the wires and see where it's not making contact. So, um, as you can see, the two new horns are installed. They sound really good, except that they don't work with a button. What I'm going to do, um, and this is quite extreme, I guess, is I'm going to take out this whole dashboard. But the added benefit is I'll be able to get to the wiring that sits behind the dashboard and I'll be able to fix probably some, some bad contacts that is behind there. The other thing I need to fix is the speedo, which doesn't work. So, um, yeah, removing the dashboard, I think, will allow me access to many areas I don't have, have access to now. And cosmetically, it'll look a lot better. All right, so after uh, about two hours worth of work, I now have the wiry ring behind the dashboard exposed and the dash removed. Welcome to the fuse box and relay box of the 924. Um, I've already loosened this little um, holder for five of the fuses. I've cleaned the contacts, they seem to be okay. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove this uh, panel here and try to clean the contacts because I think that's where my bad ground is for the horn. My hope was that I'll find a problem between that horn button and some way that fuse box down there. Um, I have not found the problem. It seems to all be working. It clicks, the relay clicks. I've replaced the relay thinking it, it might've been burnt out because it smelled quite bad. But maybe that's just 40 years of clicking. Um, but anyway, I've replaced that relay. Um, so I've been spending the, probably the last five days just chasing down this wiring harness and cleaning every contact point. I've cleaned all the ground points that you see back there, all nice and shiny. The ones can point them to you right there. I've cleaned those up, um, but I've made a discovery. Now, this is the brown wire that runs into the car underneath the dash. And as you can see, it is a black and yellow wire. I discovered this. So my theory is that um, when they broke the steering wheel, they basically just shut the wires and hooked it up this way. So what I'm going to do, I'm then going to clean that wire up. I'm going to put a connector on it and let's see if I can get this horn to work. Right, so I've connected up 
the yellow wire to the yellow wire. I am cautiously optimistic. I've put the battery back into the car and uh, have a look. I'm so happy, it's working. This car can go for roadworthiness. Uh, once I have a dashboard in, of course. All right, guys, that's it for this episode. This car is now ready for the roadworthiness. So um, join me next time, then I'll take it for roadworthiness. Goodbye. <laughs>